we're in the middle of the Salt Creek oil field uh, at the place where it was probably first discovered. Right behind me is uh, Salt Creek, uh, runs through the field, and Jackass Springs was actually on both sides of the creek, and, uh, and it was where actually was a spring of oil. Oil would, would, was coming to surface. And then in 1889, a fellow by the name of uh, Shannon uh, came out here. He was, he was with the Pennsylvania Oil Company and saw what was going on and uh, drilled a well about three miles north of here. And that was the first well in this area. And it produced between five and 10 barrels of oil a day. And from there, um, the speculation in this area uh, really went rampant. And there was a lot of uh, uh, claims made and uh, leases and, and that type of thing. So that was, that was the beginning of uh, the Great Salt Creek oil field. When Casper first started, it was a, uh, uh, a cattle town. Uh, cattle and sheep ranching was, was real big. When the oil field started going and stuff like that is, is when it really started to grow because there was such an influx of people coming to get the, the instant wealth of the oil field. Uh, whereas uh, before that, um, it was a half a dozen ranchers would come to town to the general store and, and buy their goods for a month. Uh, once the oil field started, uh, Casper really started to boom. Casper is where the first uh, refinery was built. Uh, Casper was the end of the rail line, so that's where the oil went, was to Casper to get on the rail line uh, to, to go out to the larger refineries. Where we're at now is uh, towards the northern end of the Salt Creek Field. And the Salt Creek Field is five miles wide and nine miles long. And uh, it's a, an actual oil dome and uh, where the uh, pressure from underneath pushed the rocks all up. And then the top part of it eroded off. And that's where we're standing right now is, is uh, where, these, uh, where the top portion of the, of the earth was eroded away. Uh, this land was all federal land. Uh, it was unclaimed by anybody. There was free grazing going on out here. The people would come in here, the speculators, and uh, they would uh, dig a six foot square hole, 10 foot deep. And if they found oil in the bottom of it, they had an oil claim. And uh, these claims were 40 acres. So if they found oil in a hole, they got the 40 acres around that at, as their oil claim. And many of them would, would dig a, a series of holes and then uh, that would uh, tie separate claims together. Some of these guys that had these claims would then uh, either go ahead and drill them themselves or they would try to sell these claims because they had to do so much work. They had to do $100 worth of improvements to these claims every year to keep the claim. By these improvements, uh, drilling a well uh, was an improvement. Building a road was an improvement. Building a dry dike across a draw to capture water uh, to use in steam engines was an improvement. Uh, some of them didn't do that. They, they couldn't, couldn't get that much work done in a year and they would lose their claim and somebody else would come and jump it and, and take that claim. The big oil companies, uh, realized from the start that this was something big. And uh, they, they came in right, right about the, you know, the beginning of things. The Dutch company uh, was the ones that drilled the first two wells out here. The Texas company, which became Texaco, uh, was here. And that was one of the things that the small operators, the guy that only had one 40 acre lease out here was battling was these big oil companies because there was claim jumping going on out here. And in fact, there were uh, security riders uh, these, these guys would just ride on horseback and they would ride the perimeter of a lease to make sure that somebody wasn't coming in and jumping. Uh, the Midwest Oil Company had security riders, but they weren't armed. Whereas some of the smaller, uh, more unscrupulous uh, people, uh, their claim riders were armed and they would come in and uh, just push out the, the uh, unarmed guys and, uh, and, and take, a, take a claim, take a lease. Uh, prior to 1920, there was a lot of legal battles going on out here. Two people claiming the same piece of property or something like that. So there was just a horrendous amount of uh, uh, legal battles. And uh, the government pretty much shut down all uh, operations out here until this could get settled. And uh, then in about 1920, uh, this all went through the courts, everything got settled, and then the drilling really started. Most of the wells out here were drilled in the 1920s. Uh, from 1920 to 1928. There were uh, 56 different operators out here drilling wells at that time. You're standing in the richest 80 acres in the United States. More money has been made off of this 80 acres than any place else in the United States. This was called the IBA 80. And uh, 
uh, Cy Ibo was the first one to make a claim here. And, uh, and with that, the speculation really went rampant around here. Uh, everybody started wanting to get claims around this, this IBA 80 because it was so rich. Uh, behind me over here um, is a well. Um, it's 6 Northwest 24. Uh, it was drilled in 1928 uh, to a depth of 1,900 feet. When this well would hit the second wall creek, it came in at 3,000 barrels of oil a day, free flowing. Uh, this well it was such a great well, um, it's, it's called the IBA 6. When uh, this well came in at 3,000 barrels a day, as it was flowing, the pressure would drop off. And so when it would get down to about 1,000 barrels a day, they would come in and give it about 100 quarts of nitro, explode nitro down there, stimulate it, and it would go back to 3,000 barrels a day. This went on for years. Uh, that they kept doing this. Uh, the well um, about three years ago was converted to an injection well and at that time the well was still making 100 barrels of oil a day. The Great Depression basically shut the oil field down because there wasn't any money. There was no money to drill, no money to maintain the leases or anything like that. So uh, during the Depression period there was uh, virtually no activity out here. When the Depression was over uh, activity started getting back up. And, uh, they started drilling wells in the 30s again, and then uh, came along the Second World War, stopped all activity again because uh, all monies and, and everything was being sent overseas to fight the war. If an oil company wanted to plug a well, to abandon a well out here at that time, they had to get clearance from the War Department uh, to, to plug the well because the War Department wanted all the oil they could get. They wanted to make darn sure that they weren't losing uh, any production by plugging these wells. Today, in the Salt Creek oil field, we're under a CO2 flood where we're injecting CO2 in the ground to uh, pressurize the formation again and to uh, force the oil out. And uh, with this system of uh, uh, production, uh, we aren't pumping the wells. They're flowing again like they did back in the 20s. This is a, a, a very efficient uh, means of production. Uh, uh, it's uh, sweeping the rock very well and, and getting more and more oil out of the ground now.